What's up everyone? So I mean, I originally started my channel because I noticed the lack of short, concise videos that can answer simple questions. Then I recently just had a thought for a new series I can do. Explain it to me like I'm five in under five minutes. So not only does this give you as my audience the content I originally set out to make, but it also challenges me to create short videos that are packed with information. So did you guys know that I'm doing this in under five minutes? I won't be doing any cuts during my audio, which also challenges me not to fumble over my words. We're going to kick this series off the same way most anthropology classes start out. What even is anthropology? Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay notified every time I post a new video. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Yay! All right, so let's put five minutes on the clock and start. So contrary to popular belief, anthropology is not the study of dinosaurs, it is not the study of rocks, and it is not farming. Anthropology comes from the Greek word anthropos, which is human being, and the suffix ology means the study of, therefore anthropology is the study of man. But anthropology is a very broad umbrella term. Within the field, there are four subfields you can specialize in, sociocultural, physical, archaeology, and linguistic. There are some overlaps between the subfields, but those are going to be the four main ones. Sociocultural is both social and cultural anthropology, but since they go hand in hand, they're often grouped together. At least they are in the U.S. Europe differentiates the two. They study present-day cultures around the world. They want to understand how people live in societies and what makes their lives meaningful. Common questions sociocultural anthropologists ask are, how is this society organized? What is the relationship between values and behavior? And why do people do what they do? They have a unique approach to collecting and analyzing data. These anthropologists spend long periods of time observing people, talking to them, and actively participating in their activities, which is known as participant observation. These anthropologists also write ethnographies, which are scientific descriptions of the customs of individual people and cultures. Physical or biological anthropologists are concerned with learning about human biological aspects by examining their skeletal or other physical remains. These anthropologists focus on human evolution from our ape ancestors. They want to know what qualities they had that allowed them to survive and how their reproduction worked. There are even more subfields within this overarching subfield. Paleoanthropologists study the evolution of primates and hominids from fossil evidence. Primatologists study prosimians, monkeys, and apes and work to figure out how they're all connected and what makes them different. Skeletal biology concentrates on modern human skeletons trying to learn about diseases and whatnot. And then there's forensic anthropology, which is used to identify and analyze recently deceased individuals. Think like the show Bones. Now, if you're expecting to be like Indiana Jones or Laura Croft by going into archaeology, that's not going to happen. Archaeology is studying earlier cultures by examining the artifacts they left behind. It offers a unique perspective on human history and culture, contributing greatly to our understanding of the past. It helps us understand where and when people lived, as well as why and how. Archaeology goes along with history, but oftentimes there's no written record to go off of, like historians have. Lastly, we arrive at linguistic anthropology, the study of communication practices in present-day cultures. These anthropologists want to know how many languages are there, how they're distributed throughout the world, what are their contemporary and historical relationships, what variations exist, and why do they exist, such as the common debate of caramel versus caramel. And although it's not its own subfield, many modern anthropologists are entering into applied anthropology. What is this? Basically, it's taking the contemporary practices of anthropology and applying them to the modern world. Some of the subsects of this are health and medical, business, human rights, education, museums, urban, disaster, disaster research, environmental issues, and community development. My alma mater, the University of North Texas, primarily focuses on applied anthropology, followed by sociocultural. But there are many schools out there that focus on other subfields. If you think about entering a field of anthropology, the following are the top 10 anthropology programs in the U.S. for 2019, according to Nietzsche.com. Number 10, University of South California. 9, Duke. 8, Rice University. 7, Dartmouth College. 6, Pomona College. 5, University of Chicago. 4, University of Pennsylvania, 3, Columbia University, 2, Yale, and 1, Harvard. Although these schools can come at a price tag, and I mean, I'm not saying that to deter you, 
My tuition was only about nine to $10,000, and I graduated only less than 30000 You don't have to go to a private school to get a good education. But, I mean, if that's what you want to do, you do you. <sighs> Made it. So that's pretty much what you're going to learn on in the first day of any anthropology class. Hopefully that answered any basic questions you had regarding the subject. So if you guys have any requests of topics you want me to explain to you like your five, hit me up either on Twitter at Breakdown Anthro or you can email me at alavanyamolina at gmail.com. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you all again soon.